Hey guys, well I'm out across the street and um, did a little bit of work this morning and then I'm gonna see what we can do to get this bus apart. So let me, uh, let me show you what I got going on. So I jumped in the skid steer already this morning and uh, cleared out the spot. It's actually really nice and dry back here. I haven't had, we're supposed to get a little rain this week. It was like nothing. So, I mean, out in the woods here even, it's, I mean, it's barely damp. Um, even my muddy road going back in, I can't see it very well, but that's even almost just a little greasy on top now. But anyway, got uh, got a bunch of brush does, didn't have to cut any trees down. Eventually, you know, like I've said, I'm going to build a barn over here at some point when I have the money. And really all these trees we're looking at right now are going to go away, but none of them are leaning. You know, I can, the only one that's going to be leaning over is this, this little um, oak right here. And it's small. It can easily be chained up to a truck or a skid or a quad or something and pulled over that way so i don't feel like cutting trees down today so um it's a lot easier to do it from the cab of a skid steer so anyway we got the spot cleared i think there's enough room for you know the back of the bus will sit perfect so i can back a truck right up to it when we want to load hay into it and i've got plenty of room to do the motor and axle pull up here so my game plan is i am going to hopefully you're going to watch here because i bought this fancy little tripod tripod i needed it for work but It'll make uh, making videos a lot easier. So you can see I got skid steer back there. We're gonna try to see if I can lift this thing up enough. And I got a uh, um, truck bed full of cribbing and tools over here. Got got old Nancy the service truck today. Um, got a bunch of steel in there for some projects too. But uh, yeah, we got lots and lots of cribbing. So, um, but what we're gonna try to do is get the ass end of the bus up in the air and get some cribbing under it. Um, then we get that axle torched off. It's already most of the way out, as you know, so that's not gonna take very long. Um, once that's done, we'll come around and hopefully get my wife or one of my kids to steer the bus and um, we're gonna move it as it is. I mean, I'll probably pull the front clip maybe over here, but uh, we're gonna move it as it is and um, push it into the spot I made here. And then I'm gonna to try to do a frame cut on this thing. Um, saves me from draining coolant, pulling radiator, intercooler, all that jazz. Um, so we'll do a frame cut. Then we can pull it back out in the open and get the axle out of the frame cut. And you know, still have to do some some disassembly, but much much less. And I don't care about the front, you know, four or five feet of this frame. So we'll see how that goes. I haven't been underneath it yet, so see what happens. So stay tuned. Let's, let's see if. See if the old 228 can lift this thing up. I think it's up high enough where I can get some cribbing under it, set it down, do some torching, and then once the axle's free, that extra weight, which is probably half the weight that's on that skid steer right now, then I can lift it the rest of the way and clear, make some room for the axle to come out. So.
Well, as you can see, we were successful. We were at the limits of the, uh, of the skid steer. And I really hate, I'm sure, if, if I had enough people watching my videos and subscribers, I'm sure I would get lit up in comments about me getting in and out of the uh, skid steer underneath the boom with the, well, period, but especially with um, weight on the forks beyond, well beyond the lifting capacity of the machine. So I know that that's not smart. I get it. When I die from something like that, I'll probably, you know, regret it when I'm burning in hell. But at any rate, I work by myself. So these are the things you have to do sometimes. I don't advocate it and uh, don't recommend anybody do it. So anyway, I wanted to get the axle out, but then as I was torching the last of the, uh, it was actually, I think the, the drive shaft hoop that was holding the shaft up, um, I realized I was out of acetylene or almost out. Checked the gauge, sure enough, we were low. I knew that was gonna happen. I should've just got the damn thing filled yesterday. Um, I've got a pretty fresh oxygen on it and it's a big, a bigger tank. And then I've got a, my spare oxygen in the back that was empty, so I'm gonna get that filled. So I should be good for the rest of what I gotta do, no problem. Um, but it is 12.29 um, and there's only one welding shop open on a Saturday. Uh, not the one I usually use, so I'm crossing my fingers. You know, technically, I don't think I own these tanks. You know what I mean? They're they're rented. Um, so I talked to the guy on the phone. He said because they're smaller tanks, as long as they're in test, he's probably going to fill them. Um, so, and I, I'm 99% sure they're in test. I get these things filled quite a bit, so at my usual spot. But my usual spot, like most welding suppliers are not open on the weekend so he closes at 1 p.m. it's 12 30 Nancy's doing 70 on the two lanes to make it in time because I live in the boonies and we gotta we gotta get there so hopefully we can do that but um, at any rate the axles out of the bus um, I'm gonna get underneath it now that I've got it dropped down on the cribbing a little bit lower where I feel a lot safer with it um, and gonna get you know the stuff at the back out that I need to get out. I'm gonna take the exhaust off. It's in really good shape. It's not very old at all. Um, debating on the drive shaft whether I, I don't know. I may, you know, it might be, it might be, it's it's a small shaft, small yoke, small, small joints. Um, so I don't know that it's all that useful, but you never know whoever buys this, this motor or if by some weird stroke of fate, I decide to keep it one way or the other. I've kind of learned my lesson, but shot myself in the foot with scrapping things that I shouldn't have scrapped. So, especially when scrap is so low, what's the, what's the point? Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm probably, as long as I can get it out reasonably quickly, probably going to pull the shafts. Um, I'm not going to bother with carrier bearings because they're shot probably anyway. Um, you know, there's some air fittings underneath there. May or may not be useful. If it was newer, I would definitely take them. But I keep going back to the fact that this bus is an 88. You know, it's most of that stuff is probably you know any o-rings and whatnot are probably weather checked and shot and crap probably needs to be replaced anyway so um i'll probably pass on that stuff um we'll see um the only other thing i did consider is just be a pain but i might torch off the shock mounts the upper shock towers um, cause I think, you know, I'm going to do some more checking on this axle, but I think it's, it's, if it's not the same axle, it's very similar to what's in, uh, the international. So the international truck, the Lodestar. So, uh, you know, there might be some useful bits there. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the, the front pinion seal cover might solve my woes I've got going on there. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Um, and you know, those, I think if the U-bolt pattern is the same, which I believe it is. I probably could use those those shocks and, and retrofit the Lodestar at some point. Don't need to do it now, you know. But down the line, you know, I might want to add uh, add some shocks to the to the rear axle. So anyway, we'll pick and choose what we do. Get that stuff out. Then have my uh, my wife help me. Hopefully, get that thing moved. Luckily, I don't have to pick the bus all the way up to move it. Um, you know, she's gonna we'll be able to let the the weight rest on the front axle. We'll get it started. So she's got power steering um, and 
you know, I, I can basically just kind of let it drag on the ground a little bit, get it mostly up, but this, you know, what's left of the of the springs will probably be dragging a little bit, but that's no big deal, you know, we, we don't have to get the skid steer all tippy like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the plan. So, hopefully, as long as I can get welding gas anyway, we'll be back here in, uh, in a little bit and keep working. guys well I totally forgot to set the camera up so we've already got some some work done here um, coolant lines are totally disconnected from engine to firewall um, and air air cleaners off uh, cool overflow bottles off outs and ends so I'm gonna put it back on uh, time-lapse and you can see the action <music> Right, guys so oops sorry this has been a pain in the butt but uh it's a beautiful freaking day i could not ask for better weather it's, it's it was supposed to be 57 it, there's no way it's not 60 i'm warm in the shade now granted i'm busting my ass but uh so it's out frame cut is out uh had some trouble with the some of the body mounts i couldn't get torched properly so it, started trying to rip the cowl off the front of the bus but you know what I don't really care um, I'll probably push on it with the fork try to straighten it back out a little bit I don't even know why but um, you know I need the, the firewall there to, uh, to keep the inside relatively sealed but that's it um, because of the steps I'll show you here hold on so because of the steps on the passenger side of the bus she's a little crooked and I can't really tell on this angle but it is so once I get this frame cut out of the way here I'm gonna try to now that it's a lot lighter maybe get the forks under the, the driver's side front and lock up the frame a little bit the way I want it see if I can get it more level but if not it's gonna be a crooked shed so everything's intact nothing broke that shouldn't have broke um, so whoever is gonna end up hopefully buying this thing I mean even the engine control cables the only one that okay I take that back one cable broke the, uh, the engine shutdown cable, which is a simple push-pull cable, so, because I forgot to unhook that, but uh, otherwise, literally, I mean, coolant system's intact, power steering's intact, um, because it's school bus, you know, on the coolant, so it has shut-off valves, so it's able to isolate it, so, I mean, this thing could run as a cut, so if somebody wants to hear it run, we can, uh, you know, put a battery cable on it, and uh, put the fuel lines down in the diesel can, and she'll fire, so... At any rate, let's see if we can get this thing out. I don't know if I can, probably can hold this because this is a pilot control machine. Let me get my seat belt on. I don't think this is going to go well, but let's see what happens. These, uh, stupid electronic parking brake, these uh, steers are not going to go the way I want. I'm hoping if I pull on this bumper like this, oh yeah, see it lifts lifts on the back a little bit and I am spinning already come out of that hole honey come on gotta get it out of my ruts from the skid there we go okay she's turning maybe we're gonna have good luck after all nope not so much from this side honey we're gonna go right into these trees all right I'm gonna put the phone down because this is nearly impossible but you get what I'm trying to do here right all right well guys, there it all sits. Um, went pretty good today, got the axle out. Um, got the frame cut set down and buttoned up, ready to hopefully load onto somebody's trailer. And um, I didn't pull the wheels today because um, my portable impact is a half inch drive. And my big socket says it's three quarter drive 
a one inch drive or whatever it is. Regardless, I, uh, I don't have an adapter. I don't feel like breaking those, those by hand. They probably haven't been pulled in 15 years. So we're gonna do that, get myself an adapter. We'll worry about that next weekend, get those wheels off. Um, but I uh, got the bus all shored up and it's it's crooked to the road, which is really, really bugging me, but it uh, it's just gonna have to do for now. I'll straighten it up. I wish I built a barn or something back there. Um, and got it leveled up as best as I can get it. Pretty close now. But uh, yeah, not a bad little weekend project. Um, probably not gonna get any time in on the on the load star this weekend. I got a couple little parts I picked up. Got myself a clutch brake and a uh, air compressor governor. But um, just got some yard work to do and only spend so much time on these old projects, right? So thanks for watching, guys. Um, that's probably the end of the. Uh, this little impromptu series on the bus. She's done.